competitive 3 nothing loss to Salve Regina in the first game of the day. The UMass Boston volleyball team takes on Bates College, who just lost to the same Salve Regina team three sets to one. For the Beacons, it's a chance to end this three-game tournament on the plus side and give themselves some momentum going into the LEC conference slate. Live from the Clark Athletic Center in Boston, Massachusetts, I'm Milton Posner. You're watching Beacons Volleyball on the LEC Network. We'll be right back with some opening analysis after this break. Paris changed my life, and I got there through UMass. Those very specific seminal moments in Paris, the subway. A man in a tuxedo walked in, and a woman in a long gown, and it was stunning. It all hit me. It was, it was like a lightning bolt. There was this world of beauty, style that I wanted to be a part of. That was the beginning of the journey. And that all came through the University of Massachusetts. And that was really a key moment for me. That's one of those moments you never forget. the two and four UMass Boston Beacons against the one and two Bates College Bobcats visitors from NESCAC and the last opponent of a three team tournament here for these Beacons. For the all time series, pretty simple. Bates is leading it two to one. The last meeting about 11 years ago, UMass Boston taking that one in a clean three sets to nothing. Cassie Hanneman, the UMass Boston legend led the program there with any number of assists. Shannon Thompson leading the way in the kills department with 14 on a very efficient 545 percentage. Now we got a matchup to watch and it's going to be an interesting one if the first two games have proven any indication. On the Beacon side is Carson Commons who in the last game passed up Emma Roche for third in the all-time uh, program assist list and got number 1,500 at the same time. Tacked on any number for good measure and wound up with 1,526 to her name all time. On the other side, it's Emma E, number two for the Bates Bobcats. Not as many assists, but you gotta remember, this Bates team has played fewer games than UMass in the early going, and her assist per set numbers are enough to play in Carson Commons' lead. On the highlights side, we got some stuff from you from the Friday game in case you missed it earlier. This was a three nothing win for the Beacons and a rather dominant one at that, going off on a combined score 75 to 28 across three sets to earn their second win of the season. So we'll throw those to you. Excuse me, my bad. The second to throw to Ariana Gordon one of the rising young stars on this Beacons team, got some run time in the last game, and her journey to UMass Boston is the sort of thing that just reminds you how inspiring these stories can be. I first Sorry, got I introduced to volleyball in middle school. Um, my best friend and I decided to try out for the volleyball team, yeah. and 
you know, I didn't, I was kind of interested. I wanted to play a sport. I tried out and uh, turns out I didn't make the team, um, but my best friend did. And so, you know, I did basketball and I kind of did that, but that really wasn't like, I wasn't super interested in it. Um, honestly, I was actually really bummed that I didn't make the volleyball team, even though I didn't know how to play. Um, so yeah, it started there. And then freshman year of high school, again, like, you know, my best friend wanted to join the volleyball team. So she tried out in the middle of trial. She's like calling me like, can you please like try out with me? I don't know anybody else on the team. And I was like, OK, like, fine. Um, and I ended up trying out. I made the team and I was like one of the worst players on the court. Um, I didn't get into any games. I was never a starter and the most I got was like a sub for a scrimmage. That's like the very least. That's like, yeah, that's pretty much where it got. And um, I remember my freshman year, like, I, you know, I was just so bad. And there were three courts. So there was a freshman court, a varsity court and a JV court. And as a freshman, I just remember looking over to the side at the varsity court and I just seen like, you know, like these really tall girls, like a lot of them like look just like me and they were really killing the court. Like they were spiking, like they were just so dominant on the court. Like they really like, you know, own the court. And that inspired me. And honestly, I was like, I'm going to be like them. Like I'm going to work to be just like them. And um, yeah, so that's kind of how it started. From then on, I just, you know, I did anything I could to improve. Like I was, I joined a club team. I, um, I was practicing like all the time out the Y. Like I was just doing anything I can to improve. And so by my sophomore year, I ended up trying out for JV. I made the team. And then in the middle of my JV season, I got moved up to varsity. So that was just a really big highlight. Um, and I was like, really proud of myself that I was able to prove myself and make it and I didn't want to stop there so I wanted to keep going even until college. When I was playing with my club team I feel like playing club really helped you know like I had the type of coach who was super tough on me and she I kind of learned slowly but surely that she was only super tough on me because she seen how much potential that I had in myself and she also like cared for me she wanted me to get better and so you know they really pushed me over there and I felt like I kind of had reached that point where I was like I can do this like I, I know what I'm doing like I feel confident on the court and at that point it was kind of like an escape like this is what I enjoy because this is where I can improve myself, like my mentality, my leadership, um, my mental strength. And so, yeah, I decided to keep going even further after that. And moving quickly to the starters for each team. On the Bates side, it's Megan Seabree, Julia Newman, Kate Hansen, Emma Eid and excuse me a moment Sydney Phillips Renton Morris and Alyssa, Loth uh, Alyssa Louther excuse me for the Bobcats Bobcats you can see the some of the season stats there a little trickier to gauge the Bobcats again they've played about half the number of games that the Beacons have but you can see the numbers there. Some are comparable. They're doing very well in the blocks category, the digs category, but their hit percentage is something they're gonna look to up. This has been something that's been up and down for the Beacons this year. But when they have proven themselves in that category, it's been accompanied by big stretch runs. So the starters taking the court now. No anthem in front of this one was taken care of at the first game. So we're just going to go ahead and start. Just a quick moment. For head coach Michael Houlihan and the Beacons, it's going to be Carson Commons, Alyssa Ruan, Kelsey Pereira getting the start, Taryn Brogel, Emilia Chepieska, 
and Alex Kiosa. And you can see the Bates College starters right there. Ready to get things going here. It's Carson Commons. And away we go. Oh, and an instant kill there for the Bobcats right out of the gate. It's Julia Newman, the freshman outside hitter from Norwell, Massachusetts. And a strong start for Bates. It will be interesting to see how fatigue plays into this one. Both teams played yesterday. Both teams have played a game today, but UMass Boston, as they get their first point there on a attack that goes awry. UMass Boston had a couple of hours to sit, eat, get their get some of the win back after their game against Salve Regina. While Salve Regina turned around and played Bates. So you wonder if Bates is going to be a little more tired here, how that's going to affect their rotations. But they're looking okay in the early going there as an attack caroms off the fists of Alyssa Ruan and into the back sign. 2-1 Bates in the early going. Serving now is the libero, Megan Seabury. Oh, that's a nice tap. Beautiful diving save there by Kiosa. And it's her not. Kelsey Pereira into the net. And it's a 3-1 lead. Seabury out there serving. Joined by Sydney Phillips, Emma Eid, who we highlighted in the early game. Is hello on the kill to get one of those points back for UMass Boston. And there's Charlotte Morris out there. Sydney Phillips, Emma Eid, Megan Seabury. Charlotte Morris. And they earn a point, a nice pass there for a tip through. 4-2. Hopping off is Taryn Brogel on the Beacon side. Rejoining the festivities is Marcel Tiscareño. Fantastic hit percentage in the early going, picking her shots very nicely, making good on the passes. Hitting percentage that leads the team coming into today. Kelsey Pereira is going to get a shot. Decent job to handle it, but a kill it was not meant to be. And that one sails out over the sideline. It's 4-3. And stepping to the server's position is Emilia Chepievska, who had a great deal of success there in the early game. Not so much aces, but putting Salve Regina on their heels, but she serves long here and gives it right back to the Bobcats. The Bobcats did what UMass Boston not able to do in the opening game, which is win a set against Salve Regina's serve goes into the net here from Sydney Phillips. They did take a set, but ultimately falling in four to a Salve Regina team that finishes their tournament two and one. Bates looking to get their first win of the tournament. UMass Boston looking to match Salve Regina at two and one. And it's Tony Guerra serving. Oh, and a beauty. Dead center. And about two inches in front of the line for the woman who had 10 aces in the match against Northern Vermont University Linden last night. Tied for second place in the history of the program. Oh, and a nice pass there, but a long kill, a long attack, excuse me. And the Beacons take their first lead of the opening set. Tony Guerra, well in back of the line, but a sharp serve nonetheless. That one's out of bounds. Here come the Beacons. Trying to build up a lead and get sustained momentum in a way they weren't able to do in any of the three sets against Salve. One point lead, two point leads, all they could muster in those sets. And they worked from behind pretty much the whole time. Trying to change that streak. Ron with a dig. Commons coming over, setting up Kyosa, but it's well long. And service back to the Bobcats.
Charlotte Morris here, the junior, getting things started. Comments to Chepievska annihilates the ball, but right into the net. She's made a number of good hits from that position coming out of the back row. Tall enough and a good enough leaper to make it worth it for Commons to send the ball her way even when she's not playing in the front. As that serve goes long and UMass Boston regains the lead. Viscarreño gives way to Taryn Brogel. As Rouen, who served in this same position in the first set against Salve and did rather well for herself, steps back to the spot. And it's not meant to be this time as Bates reties it, eight points apiece. Julia Newman coming on instead of Kate Hansen. Newman, the freshman, 5'10", outside hitter. She's gonna have to wait for some action as another serve sails into the net. This time off the hand of Alyssa Louther. Six foot middle hitter. And now it's Commons. Oh, and a great setup there, but too flat, too long, and that'll be another UMass Boston point. About half of the Beacon's points here, if not a little bit more, coming on outright attack errors. Ball's being spiked out of bounds. A couple of serves that have gone into the net without much hope of going over, and that's an ace. Comments going to first three-point lead in any set the Beacons have had today. The momentum decisively theirs for the moment. Comments little float serve. It falls! Carson Comments finding all kinds of gaps in the defense here and forcing Emily Hayes to call for time on the opposite side of the bench. We're going to take a quick commercial break here. But for the first time today, sustained inset momentum for the Beacons. We'll see if they can keep it going when we come back. Celebrate the soggy shoes and the slow starts. Celebrate the lessons learned along the way. These are the wins, not the shiny nail-biting kind. These are the last a lifetime kind. Something I discovered to myself is that if I have a goal, then I can accomplish it. It's a well-rounded experience. At a Division three school, you primarily a student athlete, so the school is really shaped around you developing yourself as a complete individual. It helps a lot that you have a family with your team that can guide you. Twelve to eight here, UMass Boston leading Bates College. We'll send the same lineup out. It's Kaminsk, Ruan, Chepievska, Kyose, and that one sails out. Brogel and Tony Guerra out there. It's 12 9 as Comensk, after a solid service run, gives a point back. And now it's Emma Eid. Comensk's opposite. The leading assist getter for this Bobcat squad. And mirrors Comensk in more ways than one. Back to back service errors. And it's still a four point lead. Here's Alex Kiosa to take things for Mike Houlihan's squad. Kelsey Pereira rejoining the festivities here for the Beacons. On a dive by Ruan, but it hit the floor. Only so much you can do. It was a very well-placed kill there from Sidney Phillips. Back to a three-point set. Seabury. Well, I got a chance here. Chepievska. Amelia Chepievska showing exactly why 
She's the lead sentence in a scouting report for a lot of the teams playing UMass Boston this year. Deadly at the net. Doesn't do half bad coming out of the back row either. The Taryn Bruegel short arms it into the net and we're back to three. Sustained run from UMass Boston giving way to a parade of back and forth service errors. That one gets over, it's a nice one. Demands a sliding stop and just out on a violent attack from Marcel Tiscareño. Goes long. Interesting formation here being used by the Beacons. Commons comes a long way to get it. Serves it up for Pereira. That one's wide out of the right side of the court off the hand of Sidney Phillips, the senior. Both teams, but particularly Bates, having a little bit of trouble putting their kills where they want them. And more balls sailing out. There you go. Chepievska for the second time serves long, and this time a bit off to the left side too. 15-13. Both teams just trying to settle down and find the hardwood in inbounds territory. Chrissy Chu with a serve. Chepievska pops it. That one may have been going out. Chu stopped it. And the tip there robs Pereira of a chance. It's 15-14 now. The lead all but evaporated. And UMass Boston looking to regain some momentum. They're a little bit stuck in the mud right now. Chepievska. Oh, Kyosa with a great hit. Didn't have a great opportunity, but almost found the floor. Ruan with a dive. Commons with a surprise tap. Bates gives him a free ball. Miscommunication there. It finds its way to Pereira. Blocked. Wild rally here. All kinds of overlapping players for both sides. Comments to Tiscareño. Oh, what a block. Marcel Tiscareño. All over the place during a frantic rally. And a fitting capper that she seals it with a stuff. Two point beacon lead. They've got Bates in their rear view mirror and they're looking to keep him there. Oh, nice stop by Guerra. Kiosa, the tap over a chance, and they make good. Alyssa Louther climbing high and putting that one into the back row. A little bit more of a height advantage here, more players above 5'10 for this Bates College team. The short arm into the net. Six foot Alma Makic. 5'11", Katie Kortakas. A couple of six-footers in Charlotte Morris and Alyssa Louther out there right now. Another couple of 5'10 players we haven't seen yet in the middle of the floor as Ruan's serve goes just over the far corner. Four service errors apiece. Actually, make that five for UMass Boston, four for Bates in the opening set. Kyosa. Oh, how about that kill? Five foot seven, Alex Kyosa rising to the occasion and putting pressure on that back line. May have been going out. Would have been close. And close enough that they can't take too many chances on it. Alyssa Lather kind of had to flail at it. Comments back to the server spot. Wide again. Beacon's lead is back to three as they close in on their first victorious set of the day. Oh, Comments floats one in again. It's the second time in this set that she's found the empty patch of hardwood for a defense that played her to hit long. 
four point lead biggest of the set for the Beacons. We're gonna take a quick timeout and return with the conclusion. You're watching UMass Boston Volleyball. I got a chance here. Chepievska. Oh, what a block. Joseph. Hi, my name is Carson Comins, she says, but you can call me Ace. She's got two of them. And the go along with one from Tony Guerra, UMass Boston leads three to nothing in that category, providing a decent chunk of a four point difference here. Common stepping back to the server square. Both of those aces have come from her finding a little gap and hitting the ball more or less to the 10 foot line. And there she goes long and misses. So back to Bates, down three now. Commons, Kyosa, Ruan, Guerra. Chepievska and Brogel out there for the Beacons. Kamensk sets up Chepievska and handled nicely by Megan Seabree, the libero. Oh, what a play by Ruan, but they can't make good on it. Alyssa Ruan with the quickest of reflexes and has been showing it off all day. The first one to the floor there. And Michael Houlihan wants to talk to his team. They give up a couple of points coming out of the timeout. First, Carson comments on a serve that went long and a little bit off to the left. And then on a superb kill there to bring it within two, have the lead that they had at the last timeout. But it gives us a chance to take statistical stock here of a game that the Beacons lead by two. Julia Newman and Sydney Phillips leading the way in kills for Bates College. Amelia Chepievska, Taryn Brogel, Marcel Tiscareño, Kelsey Ferreira, they're spreading them out pretty evenly for the UMass Boston Beacons. Team in the developmental stages trying to get their mojo back, their trust back, their communication, their chemistry back after a difficult season, or rather a pandemic taking the season away, I suppose. Makes it hard to do conditioning. Makes it hard to play as a unit. A lot of teams suffering this, but head coach Michael Houlihan in his eighth season understands what needs to be done as long as they peak at the right time of the year, he says. Then I'll have a good shot of repeating as LEC champions. Ruan with a flailing stop, Chepievska, Kaminsk. And a little bit too much one-handed flailing there for the volleyball gods to award them a point. Another point out of the timeout. Hulahan marshals his troops and asks for another timeout. So the timeout's coming fast and furious here. One timeout called when it was 20 to 16, another when it's 20 to 18, and now at 20 to 19. Three timeouts within three or four points. And I think we'll take a little break ourselves and be right back with more UMass Boston Volleyball. I just wanted to get good grades and 
to do well, but it also made me realize that I have a lot of career goals. You're there to get a full college experience, not only participate in your sport, but participate in things outside of that, and it's all about growing as a person. My coaches have helped me with figuring out who I really am. Their lives are dedicated for us to succeed. Well, what was ostensibly a game of volleyball at least a few minutes ago has turned into a timeout-a-thon. Three timeouts called in the last four points. One on the Beacon side, excuse me, two on the Beacon side, one on the Bobcat side, but back we are. Oh, and a high-flying attack there, a nice save by Tony Guerra to keep it from kill status. Ruan to Kyosa with a great hit from behind the line. Oh, and that's a kill if you've ever seen one. Katie Sanchez, the 5'10 junior, leaping to put that one away. All even at 20 now. And the claustrophobia begins. Kyosa, that's down. Off the flailing hands of Megan Seabury, or excuse me, of Emma Ede. Kyosa crafty playing up toward the net, just 5-7. Making kills like somebody a few inches taller. And she'll step to the server spot here. Oh, how about an ace? How about an ace, Alex Kyosa? The junior from Greece at a North Quincy High School just down the road. Making her mark on the first set. Something of a free ball here. Oh, Kelsey Pereira having to make a move on that one. Gets a good tip in the air. And the discombobulation awards the Beacons a point. Fantastic adjustment mid-air from Kelsey Pereira. Wasn't a great pass but she found enough of an empty spot to make the Bobcats scramble. 23-20. That one's long. Over by the camera operator, hopping over the divide. And it's a set point here for the Beacons. Kyosa, low balls it. Oh, just is returned there. A free ball for the Beacons. Chepievska, that's the set. Five straight points and a 25-20 first set victory for UMass Boston, their first set one of the day. And an encouraging sign for a team looking to rebound from a sweep loss to Salve Regina earlier. Mike Houlihan's squad's dialed in. We'll be right back with a second peer with the second set from Clark Athletic Center. Stick around. Oh, what a block. Kyosa.
I'm the first undergraduate alumnus to uh, lead this university. I'm very proud of that. I was literally able to transform my life because of the University of Massachusetts, and I want that for every single student that walks through the door. Well, if you're a UMass Boston fan, you're probably in a decidedly better mood than you were 25 minutes ago. And that's because the Beacons, after losing all three sets to Salve Regina in the morning matchup, have taken the afternoon by storm, 25-20, holding off a surging bait squad at the end and scoring the last five points to seal their first set of the day. Head coach Michael Houlihan starting the second set with Alyssa Ruan, Tony Guerra, Emilia Chapievska in the back row, Taryn Brogel, Alex Kiosa, and Carson Kamens up front. It'll be Emma Eid leading off the serve for Bates College. Megan Seabury, Sydney Phillips out there with her, Alyssa Louther too. Oh, and that one's in. Little poke job there from Kiosa. Finds empty space. And they get to lead off the set with Common serving. Got a couple of aces already. Oh, and there's another. Common gives you so, so much. We talked a little earlier about her passing up Emma Rocha for third on the all-time program assist list but a versatile player to be sure. Shoulder stop, back-to-back -back aces. Carson comments. And going back to the last set, that's eight consecutive points for UMass Boston. Oh, and he wonders if a third ace turns into a service error that breaks both streaks. On comes Kate Hansen, defensive specialist for Bates College, in the stead of Katie Sanchez. Oh, diving stop, Guerra. Kiosa would have been blocked anyway. Not sure it would have mattered much. But Bates College coming back. It's three to two now. Jump serve, Kiosa, cross court Ruan. Not going to get a great hit off and see what Bates can do with it. Just shy of the white line, and it's 4 2. Serve goes back to the Beacons. There's a nice block there in the middle of the rally, disrupting the Bobcat momentum. He also with a big lob there. This is going to be a tough one to play. Oh, and a nice block there from a couple of beacons. Oh, and Alyssa Ruan and Kelsey Pereira. Looked like Pereira apologizing, saying, that's your ball. That's the libero's ball. Mike Houlihan's talked about this. Still working out some of the kinks, making sure they can trust each other, communicate with each other. They don't expect it's going to be perfect the second week of the season. And that one just long to even up the set at 4-4. He doesn't expect it'll be there right away. It may not even be there tomorrow or the next week. But if they get it for the bulk of conference play, they have it clicking for them. By the time conference tournament rolls around, then you can set up Chepievska for kills like that. Sailing from the 10-foot line. 
and striking fear into the hearts of anyone standing in front of one of those swings. Taryn Brogel. Bases got a chance here. Oh, and a stellar block there. Tip battle at the net, still going. Comments with a set. Chepievska comes through, tipped, and finally moves back to the remainder of the court. Oh, and Brogel is kicking herself right as she was hitting that. She knew she was about to shank it backwards. And we're all even at five. Marcel Tuscareño pops into the game, joining Kamensk and Chepievska on the front line there for UMass Boston. On the Bobcats side, Chrissy Chu comes back into the game and will serve to try to break the tie, and she does. Kiosa took a chance, and it was just inside the line. It's the first lead, inset lead of the game for Bates. Oh, and an acrobatic adjustment there, but you can't quite do that. Going to be an attack violation there. 7 5. Carson Common seeking clarification there. Looked like she possessed the ball in a way she wasn't quite allowed to, just wanted clarification on the call. Calling out assignments. Chrissy Chu. Sharp serve. This one's long, and Kyosa knew it. 7 6 in favor of the Bobcats. Now it's Chepievska to serve. Overpass. Tiscareño went for a kill, and she's going to get one. Marcelo Tiscareño with a stellar leap from a standstill. Man, she got up. At just 5-9, powered that ball into the chest of a defender who didn't have much chance of stopping it. Chepievska again. Floats it short this time. Cross-court set. That should get the job done there. Alyssa Louther. Back to a one point lead for Bates after UMass Boston tied it up. And a very hyped Kate Hansen over there as she subs out of the game. Discareño with another mid air contortion. This one's legal. Ruan. Chepievska. Kiosa short-armed it into the net. Looked hopeful for a minute for the Beacons, but it's back to a two-point lead as Alyssa Louther remains in the server spot. Bates seizing the momentum for themselves. Comments, Tiscareño. Keeps it on their side. Chepievska to the back. Oh! The set snipe. And Amelia Chepieska looking for the kill forever and always, no matter where she is in the sequence, how she's hitting it, what the positioning is, or how much chaos has occurred within the rally. Laser focused on wherever the empty spot is. Back and forth at the net. Discareño with a gallop swing. Tip blocked. And a little bit too much flailing there for the Beacons, and it falls point to the Bobcats. 10-8 now. Julia Newman to the server spot. Alma Makic, six-footer, subs in. Her first action. Kiosa off the block, and a chance for Bates here. Oh, and a little reverse Tap over tried there by Ede. Didn't quite pan out the way she wanted it to. Newman gives away to Megan Seabury as the libero rejoins the fun as her libero opposite Alyssa Ruan prepares to serve for a point that would retie things. Ruan finds her opposite. Oh, and she's screaming out for coverage and it dropped. Seabury was yelling out. Katie Sanchez and Sydney Phillips both sort of standing there, waiting for the other to take it. And Megan Seabury, the senior, 
The libero often calling out coverage knew exactly what was about to happen. Long serve there. And a lead given right back to the Bobcats. After a first set punctuated by three timeouts, they had consistent flow of play here. Chepievska out of the back. How does she find the hardwood time and time again? Eyes in the back of her head. Seems to be the only rational explanation for this kind of consistency in targeting the floor. Doesn't matter if the ball's hit behind her, off to the side, or if Carson Commons tees it up perfectly. Any way it can happen. And back and forth we go. Sydney Phillips with another kill for the Bobcats. UMass Boston trying to reclaim the lead that they built. It was a 3-0 lead early on, and they'll have a chance to now. We're even at a dozen apiece. Kiosa serve backing up Seabury. On a nice spike, tried to pancake it, but couldn't quite make it there. As she dives to the hardwood, 13-12. Neither team has scored more than two points in a row since the Bobcats mounted the run that tied the game. Ruan, Commons, Pereira, kind of missed the swing, but it worked. Look what I found, says Kelsey Pereira. After 90% whiffing on the swing, she evens it up at 13 apiece and sends us to a timeout called here by Bates. We'll be right back after this. I did receive a non-athletic scholarship upon entering uh, school. I got the presidential scholarship, which was huge for me. I think there's more opportunities for academic scholarships in Division Three. I did receive academic scholarships. Just being involved on campus, being a leader, all those things combined kind of get me recognized. It's a great experience for me. A 25-point set has turned into a 12-point set. We're all even at 13 here in the second set. UMass Boston took the first set 25-20 over Bates College. Bates looking to rebound from it. They're not going to do it getting blocked like that. Luis Carreño and Pereira coming over. And Bruegel supplanting it with a dig. Pereira dribbles one over the net. Tap. Comets just got her hands on it. Kiosef far side. Pereira. Easily into the clutches of the center back. Oh, not a particularly whistling hit there, but it found the flailing right arm of Taryn Bruegel and plummeted to the floor. Chrissy Chu coming on. Sydney Phillips going to the bench. Chu joining Kate Hansen, Megan Seabury, Emma Ede. Alyssa Louther out there as well. Oh, and a dive bomb there. They keep finding him. Why beat him in the air when the ground game is working so well? And here's the person that more than anyone else symbolizes that shift within UMass Boston this game. As Chepieska almost low bombs the serve and a taste of her own medicine breaks the 14-14 tie. Mm. 
neither team able to pull away in the second set. Overpass. Wasn't pretty, but it worked for the Bobcats. And the first two-point lead we've seen in a while. Here's Lowther. Vizcarreño flying through the air. Chepievska comments, Tiscareño! She finally timed one. She finally found the ball at the peak. She was at her peak. And when that happens, all it's left to do is admire how quickly the ball goes to the floor. That one sails long from Guerra. And it's back to a two-point Bobcat lead. Viscareño about three or four times in this set has had to resort to making tip plays because the timing wasn't quite right with the pass. But when she gets to her apex, that is when she is at her most deadly. And the dive from Alyssa Ruan can't corral that one. It's a three-point Bobcat lead. And they can taste that second equalizing set. Serve coming in here from Julia Newman. Nice move there from Ruan. Tiscareño. Miscommunication and it finds the hardwood. Tiscareño joyfully gives way. Taryn Brogel rejoins the front line. Alyssa Ruan to the server spot. And UMass Boston needs to build on it here. Trading point for point won't do it for them anymore. Oh, well, it's a tough one to field. Guerra manages it, but doesn't exactly set up comments all that well. Back to a three-point lead. Timeout called by Mike Houlihan to try to reset his team for the stretch run of this second set. We're going to take a quick break ourselves and be right back with the conclusion of the second set from Clark Athletic Center. Stick around. With her, Alyssa Louther too. Alyssa Louther out there as well. Oh, and a dive bomb. But a versatile player to be sure. Shoulder. Coming in here from Julia Newman. Nice move there from Ruan. Tiscareño. Nineteen serving sixteen here. We can see what game plan Mike Hulahan's team <laughs> pulls out from the timeout, and it turns out they don't need one for the moment. Service error hands him a freebie as Carson Kaminsk. An ace of spades thus far today. Looking for another. Oh, you're kidding. Carson comments, have yourself a set. Comes again and again for the Beacons. Carson comments has stepped to the server spot and delivered. And spoke a little too soon as that one sails about a foot long. And returns a two-point lead to the Bobcats along with the serve. Kate Hansen, freshman defensive specialist back there to kick things off. And Ruan fields it. Oh, Chepievska, get out of the way.
The bench loves it. Mike Houlihan loves it. His team is within one. They've got the serve back. We'll see what Alex Kiosa can do with it. Put him on their heels a little bit. This is going to be a tough play. Oh, and they get it through the block. Chepieska and Brogel jumping at the net. But it goes off the fingertips, squirts to the center of the court, and falls untouched. It's the libero Megan Seabury back for the serve. Kiosa in front of Ruan. Chepievska, that hit a hand. Point goes to the Beacons. The hardest hitter on the Beacons roster, and it discombobulates a defense that isn't sure how to deal with it. Now it's Taryn Brogel. Now it's not Taryn Brogel. 22-20 Bobcats. Brogel gives way. It's Ruan Kiosa Pereira, Chepievska, Kaminsk, and Tiscareño out there now. But a quick timeout called by Mike Houlihan. And just when you thought the timeouts were a thing of the past, Houlihan and head coach Emily Hayes on the Bates side have run off a handful of them. 22 to 20. Momentum has not swung much of anybody's way. Most of the set teams have been lucky to score two points in succession, let alone three. But it's happened a couple of times. The first time was a 3-0 service run to kick off the set. Carson Kaminsk leading the way there for the Beacons with an ace mixed in there. The second one coming in the one that handed Bates a lead that they have retained for the most part through occasional ties, but never letting UMass Boston come all the way back to take the lead. Benches are animated. Both of these teams having lost to Salve Regina earlier in the day and looking for not so much revenge, but a rebound. Chance to end, at least for UMass Boston, to end the tournament on the plus side. And a chance for Bates to walk out of the tournament with at least one win. Tiscareño. Yes! Off the tip of the net and the block. Momentum eaten, ball fallen, point awarded. Chepievska. Oh, how about another race for the Beacons? We're all even at 22. Bates trying to regroup. Back-to-back -back scores out of the timeout for UMass Boston. On another tough serve to handle. It's going to be a free ball. Or will it? Beacons take the lead. 23-22. And what looked to be the revenge set for Bates is now looking like it can give UMass Boston command. Overpass on the dig. Chepievska to the outside. Call it a free ball for Bates instead. Poked over. Diving play, Kiosit. Comments with a surprise set. And down, 23 all. Wild and exciting set there. A rally, excuse me. Although I suppose it has been a wild and exciting set. We're all even at 23. The last set was tied 20-20 before UMass Boston rattled off five in a row. Discareño going out of bounds, but the Bates backline keeps it in play. Chepievska, comments, surprise, oh! You looked at the far side, you saw the gear up for a massive spike. And Carson Comments pulls the rug. Tony Guerra serving for set point, and what would be a commanding two sets to nothing lead. Not so fast. 24 all.
Julia Newman serving 24-24. Comments. Tiscareño. Oh man. A laser to the floor. And a high five from Mike Houlihan. And the entire bench on her way to the end. Alyssa Ruan serving another set point here for the Beacons. Seabury fields it. Surprise tap. Hello, second set. UMass Boston takes a commanding two sets to nothing lead over Bates College. Following up a 25-20 first set with a 26-24 second set. We're going to take a quick break here and be back with the third set from the Clark Athletic Center. Stick around. You don't want to miss this. Celebrate the soggy shoes and the slow starts. Celebrate the lessons learned along the way. These are the wins. Not the shiny nail-biting kind. These are the last a lifetime kind. Coming in here from Julia Newman. Nice move there from Ruan. Tiscareño. Oh. What do we mean when we say UMass is here for a reason? We mean that the five-campus UMass system is the only public research university that the people of Massachusetts established to create better futures for themselves, but also for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts as a whole. It's a university that educates 73,000 students every day and graduates 17,000 graduates every year. We are the university that educates the workforce of Massachusetts. We're one of the state's three major academic research engines, research that saves and improves people's lives, and research that drives the innovation economy of Massachusetts. We provide services and economic opportunity to every region of the Commonwealth. The noted uh, historian David McCullough uh, once said that two great concepts, university and Massachusetts, come together in only one place, and we are very aware of how fortunate we are to bear the name the University of Massachusetts. We recognize that we are truly here for a reason, and that recognition inspires us and drives us every single day. Mojo doesn't show up on a stat sheet, but you don't need it to measure this Beacon team right now. You can see the confidence, you can see the animation, you can see the way the bench is chatting, talking, yelling, in support of the six on the floor. For the moment, it's going to be Alyssa Ruan, Kelsey Pereira, Carson Kamensk, Alex Kiosa, Taryn Brogel, and Emilia Chepievska. Team has won back-to-back -back sets after losing the three in the early going. They've done it behind a good number of aces. Carson Commons leading the way in that category. But it's going to be, and it is going to be Commons leading off the third set from the server spot. The super senior. Graduate student here, five foot seven out of Worthington, Ohio. We got a quick break here. And finally, the rest of the Bobcats rejoin the action.
There seems to be some kind of conversation here between the Bobcat bench and the scorer's table. Can't quite make out what's going on here. And here we are. Here comes the noise and here comes the serve. Does Carson Commons have another ace in her? Not quite. Oh, and it just does find the interior of the back line. Oh, and the Bates bench animated as ever. Playing their second straight match. Carson comments, chatting over with the ref. Emma Eve comes over to join the fun. Confirming it. Both of the setters leading roles for their teams. The upperclassmen in the middle of the action and leading the charge emotionally. Karen Brogel just outside and back to that points for the Bobcats to open the set. Emma Eid, Ruan handles it. They got a chance here coming out of the back row, no. Comments waiting as the tip evades the block. Shepievska just did dodge a violation there. The miscommunication, it's a very much a free ball here. Kyose, comments. Kyose, down. Just did tuck it in there on the back line. First point of the third set for the Beacons. Looking to match a 3-0 win against NVU Linden last night in the first game of the Babson Invitational Tournament. Short serve, but not short enough. And it'll be returned. Oh, nice block there. Brogel and Shepievska. Brogel! Hello and goodbye. Just straight dunks that one faster than anyone could react on the Bates side. 2-2 two -two and a 2-0 set lead for the Beacons. Oh, nice dive there to keep that one alive and uh, an attack that sails. That would have been out of bounds on the basketball court, it looks like. Not really sure what the plan was there from Katie Sanchez. But Kyosa's service run continues. Oh, and that's a tricky one to handle. It's backspinning, and it'll net a free ball here. Ruan, Kamensk, Chepievska. Oh, and a diving play there by Megan Seabury. Point Beacons. 4-2. <laughs> Kyosa, Ruan, Kamens, Chepievska, Brogel, and Pereira spearheading a service run for the Beacons that flipped what looked like might have been the Bobcats seizing the momentum. Maybe they still will. That one sails about three inches long and brings it back to within a point. 4-3, UMass Boston over Bates in the third set. Popped up, Shepievska, oh yeah. Hit the block and was spinning so violently over toward the side that you have to imagine it would have been hard for anyone, even if they'd been positioned right there, to field that ball in any kind of meaningful way. Karen Brogel, hello ace. She's fired up. She immediately runs to the ball. Anxiously waiting. Trying to build on a 6-3 lead. Oh, and it perfectly finds that empty spot in the center back, about five feet in front of the end line. 6-4 now. Megan Seabury serving over to Pereira. Give and go, Tiscareño. Oh, what a play by Megan Seabury to keep that one from the floor. Chepievska, Seabury, you're kidding. 
Megan Seabury take a bow here as the Bobcats set up the kill for Alyssa Lowther. Couple of miracle dives there from the junior, excuse me, from the senior libero. Listed as a defensive specialist. But playing the libero role about as well as you could ask here. The Beacons get the point right back. Sheppy Epps got to serve now. Skips over, nicks the net. Kiosa with a save, but right into the pole. Not much of a chance for Pereira to make a play, and the lead's back down to one. Some more give and go, back and forth action here. As Chrissy Chu steps to the server spot. Well long and into the facade. Beacons got the two point lead back without even trying. And it'll be, appears to be Tony Guerra's serve. Ten aces in the win yesterday evening for Tony Guerra. That'll do. 9-6, as the Bobcats have trouble putting the ball in the right spot for the hitter. Over and just long for Guerra. It's one of those plays where they abandon it and let the ball fall where it may. Comments sets up to Scareño. Oh, yep. Marcel Tiscareño off the blocker's hands into the hardwood. And immediately gives way. It's Ruan, Gara, Chepievska, Kiosa, Kaminsk, and Taryn Brogel out there for Mike Houlihan. Sebri, Newman, Eid, Chu, Alyssa Lowther, and Katie Sanchez for Emily Hayes' squad. Into the net. Failed tip chance there, 11 to seven. Largest lead of the third set for the Beacons. And now Alyssa Ruan will see how long she can make this service run go. Overpass, tip, out of bounds. And by a matter of inches, the momentum swings. They're coming over from Newman, Kiosa. Chepievska, hello. She is a threat no matter which row she plays in, no matter where she is on the court. And irrespective of the method she chooses to hit the ball, if your defense has a hole, watch out. Comments looking to build on a four point lead. Tipped over. Oh, and Commons took that one. Alyssa Ruan maybe had a slightly better play on it. Commons gives way now. Or no, she's just going to get a towel. Never mind. We've seen a couple of those plays. First, it was Ali Dean taking a couple of shots away from Amelia Chepievska. Here it's a little bit different. It's the veteran going over. The young one. Comments a graduate student. Alyssa Ruan, one of the three freshman defensive specialists slash liberos. That's going to be an ace there for the Bobcats. Still some kinks to hash out. But Alyssa Ruan, talk about a freshman stepping up into prime time. A quick hit for Brogel. Gets the job done. Farron Brogel with some infectious energy over there for the Beacons. You can tell from up here. You can probably tell through the screen you're watching on as well. Kiosa with a big lob and a sharp hit. That sails about five feet long and over by the feet of one of our camera operators down there. 
13-11. Beacon still clinging to the lead. On comes Kate Hansen in favor of Katie Sanchez on the Emily Hayes squad side. A little bit of a moment of indecision for Kelsey Pereira, but she recovers. Tip, no good. Comments lobs it up. Gives Ruan some time. Chepievska, oh, brilliant save there from Hansen to get the dig. A chance for Bates if they can organize themselves. They can, but it's long. About a foot too long on the attack. And the Beacons go back up by three. Taryn Brogel. Almost had an ace there. It just did stay in play. Kaminsk. Kyosa. Herrera. Just long. By about two, three inches at most. It plays hooky with the end line and falls on the wrong side of it. Seabury. Oh, and a shank. This is dangerous. Oh, what a play by Tiscareño. Digging it out of nothing, blocking and earning a point for the Beacons. Can you believe the reflexes? Digging a ball about six inches off the floor and then meeting the hitter at the top. Oh, another great dive by Seabury, but no one in the neighborhood to pick it up. She's going to be banged and bruised by the end of this one. And if you're a libero, I suppose you wear that as a badge of honor. Chepievska shorts it. Here's a chance. Chepievska pops it up. Pereira on the far side. Seabury's there to recover. Oh, and Kyosa got a hand on it, so that's going to be a bobcat point. Trimming the lead back down to three. It's 16-13. Chrissy Chu now. Fires it. Kyosa. Comments. Discarreño with a tip. Oh, man. We talked about it a little earlier. But Tiscareño has mistimed a good number of jumps today and still wound up with a cookie by the end of the play. Contorting her body, what would seem like flailing if you didn't see how many times she had it under sheer perfect control. As that one goes wide to the left. Tiscareño spearheading with some fantastic play in the middle of this third set. And the Beacons now with a five point lead, the biggest they've had in any set. Oh, and that one's down to the floor. Great play there by Alyssa Lowther. In a match where you're maybe a little bit more tired than you would otherwise be, both of these teams playing in their second match today. This is the sixth set for the Beacons, seventh for the Bobcats. Maybe you don't have as much juice in your legs, you can't get up quite as much to challenge at the net. As Kios acknowledging a little bit of a mistake there on a short pass. When you got a little bit less energy, the accuracy of those submarine style attacks becomes even more important. Timeout called here, Beacons lead the third set. What would be the decider, 18-15. We're going to take a quick break and be right back with a conclusion of the third set. Paris changed my life, and I got there through UMass. Those very specific seminal moments in Paris, the subway. A man in a tuxedo walked in, and a woman in a long gown, and it was stunning. It all hit me. It was it was like a lightning bolt. There was this world of beauty and style that I wanted to be a part of. That was the beginning of the journey. And that all came through the University of Massachusetts. And that was really a key moment for me. That's one of those moments you never forget.
UMass Boston leading two sets to nothing and 18-15 in the third set. You're watching UMass Boston Volleyball on the LEC Network. My name is Milton Posner. Thank you so much again for joining us for an awesome afternoon of volleyball. And Amelia Chepieska just keeps making it more awesome with kills like that, handing her team a four-point lead. As Tiscareño gives way for Taryn Brogel there. Chepieska still playing in the back row along with Tony Guerra and Alyssa Ruan. Brogel joins Kiosa and Carson Kamensk up front. And an ace yet again for the Beacons. Back to the largest lead of the set, five points. Or excuse me, four points for the Beacons, 19-15. Now it's five points. A Little bit too short, the block was there just in case. And the Beacons knocking on the door of their second win in three tournament games. Chance to move just a step closer to a 500 record. Ruan short arms it into the net. Beacon still in great position here. Oh, a tough play by Guerra and a miscommunication. It falls there. They're gonna have a quick chat in the huddle about whose ball that was. <laughs> Mike Houlihan comes over and adds his piece into the huddle. Leads back down to three. Julia Newman looking to mount a service run in a must-win third set for the Bobcats. And instead goes long. Jeffievska opens the door and the ball sails on by. Now Carson Kaminsk, the last person the Bobcats would like to see serving this ball right now. And that's why, forces the overpass and Brogel takes care of business. 22-17. Comments toes the line again. Diving stop by Seabury doesn't stop another race as it turns out. Carson Comments. The first game she became the third leading assist getter in program history and decided she was gonna show us something completely different in the second game. And hits it into the net. Well, easy come, easy go, but it's still a five point lead for the Beacons here. As Bates is getting into some dangerous, dangerous territory here. UMass Boston team has found the range and when you find the range, that happens. Alex Kiosu with a great kill to set up a match point. And it will be Kiosu who gets to serve on the point that could finish this one off. Seabury, have to save this one, it's a free ball. Comments, Pereira, game over. UMass Boston with a rebound win, three sets to nothing over Bates College. Carson Comments leading the way as she so often does with any number of assists and aces to her name. This time she adds the serving prowess and gets them over the line. Marcel Tiscareño with amazing play down the stretch as well for the Beacons. We are going to go to a quick break We'll be back, we get to talk to head coach Mike Houlihan and uh, analyze a little bit more, go over some of the highlights from this game. So stick around, you don't wanna miss it. We'll be right back. We graduate 17,000 students every year and the vast majority of them stay in Massachusetts. We have over 280,000 graduates in Massachusetts today. We graduate people in critical fields, engineering, STEM fields. We graduate people with research experience where they can start their own companies. It is amazing to see what UMass graduates accomplish once they leave the university. 
I remember vividly my own graduation from UMass. It was a beautiful day. It was perfect weather. I remember the pride that my mother and father felt. I could see it in their eyes. Here it is 30 years later, I get an opportunity to preside over UMass commencement. It is so moving and inspiring for me to think this is what it's for. Here we are, we have these graduates that we're going to unleash on the world, ready to take on the world, happy about the accomplishment, but also hopeful about the future. It's hard not to get emotional at a UMass graduation. You see that UMass is here for the Commonwealth, here for a reason. I came from a working class family. I grew up in a hard edge section of Lowell, Massachusetts. And uh, I lived with my six siblings and my parents in a four bedroom house that had one bathroom. I knew that the only way that I was going to uh, get to where I wanted to get to was if I got a high quality college education and I had the University of Massachusetts right in my hometown. It made a difference. I'm the first undergraduate alumnus to uh, lead this university. I'm very proud of that. I think with that comes a special responsibility as a steward, as a protector. Every student that I see that walks through the door, I mean, I see myself, I was exactly where they are now. I had their same challenges, their same aspirations, their same dreams. And it makes me want to fight for them. It makes me want to make sure that they get every opportunity that I got. I was literally able to transform my life because of the university. Come back with a 3 nothing win. What's the message to the team in between those games to try to get them back on the horse? I think it's just a matter of creating that standard and sticking to it, and they did a great job of that today at the second half. And to be honest, I guess right now I would take that 3-0 loss to see what I saw in the second match and their recovery that they were able to do. Um, that's a big part of it, and I think it's something that they showed some pretty big mental toughness to be able to come back from the 0-3 to get a 3-0. We're seeing a lot of great dives out there, a lot of great digs from Alyssa. What does it mean that you can call on a freshman like that to fill such an important role on this team? Yeah, I mean, Alyssa's terrific, uh, local from this area, and uh, has some ties to our program, and she's a great asset right now, and I think when we can clean up some of those habits, I think she's going to become a stellar uh, defensive player. You mentioned after the first game we were talking about setting that foundation and kind of getting this team into a rhythm where they can communicate with each other. You weren't happy with where they were then. What did you see in that respect that you liked so much this game? I really saw that we grew in that area a lot, and I think it's something that we got to continue to grow into and continue to establish so that way, again, we can keep creating larger bases on top, essentially. Um, so it was good to see, and it's something that I'm happy that it came towards the end of the weekend. Fantastic, Coach. Thank you so much. This is head coach Michael Houlihan after a 3 nothing victory over Bates College to rebound from a 3-0 loss earlier in the game and send the Beacon for of Massachusetts. And I want that for every single student that walks through the door. Package and come back with a little bit more analysis before we send you on your happy way this afternoon. So stick around. We want to do theater that is responsible. We want to do music that is evocative and like elevates us. We want to do dance that reflects urban movement and connection. I've been a practicing designer for the last 30 years. My specialty is costumes. This space is fantastic. This is our recital hall, and it's so outstanding that many people compare it to the symphony hall because the quality of sound is, is like nothing in town. And there is the painting studio, the sculpture studio, the digital studio. The type of students that we're getting, you know, they're more competitive. They're looking for this kind of facilities. They look at other private colleges, but they decide to come here. Boston is filled with regional theaters, so our students can actually apply what they're learning and build a portfolio. And it's so great to see the names on the programs, and people may not know they're from UMass Boston, but eventually as they graduate and they begin to get professional jobs and you see their bios, that's gonna be UMass Boston, it's gonna be the stamp all over them. UMass Boston represents what true liberal arts is about. In my class, you have students who are psychologists, business, chemistry. The final goal is that we have well-rounded global citizens graduating from UMass Boston. Psychology is about understanding the individual and understanding the mind. The main reason why I want to combine psychology and business degrees is because I want to understand the business decisions that are made. I'm Nurchin Chalabi. I'm from Turkey originally. I'm a senior at the five-year BA to MBA program at UMass Boston. 
I think in management, the biggest mistake you can make is to not listen. So I want to be able to step into a company and say, here's what you're doing now, and here's how you can improve it. I moved here when I was 16 for high school. Moving from Turkey, it was a rough journey for me because when you don't really speak the language that well, and when you don't really fit in the crowd, it's very easy to disappear. But I decided not to give up, so, and UMass helped me. <laughs> I wanted to be able to improve myself. I wanted to be able to try new things. And I think UMass gave me a really good head start on that. What do we mean when we say UMass is here for a reason? We mean that the five campus UMass system is the only public research university that the people of Massachusetts established to create better futures for themselves, but also for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts as a whole. It's a university that educates 73,000 students every day and graduates 17,000 graduates every year. We are the university that educates the workforce of Massachusetts. We're one of the state's three major academic research engines research that saves and improves people's lives, and research that drives the innovation economy of Massachusetts. We provide services and economic opportunity to every region of the Commonwealth. The noted uh, historian David McCullough uh, once said that two great concepts, university and Massachusetts, come together in only one place, and we are very aware of how fortunate we are to bear the name the University of Massachusetts. We recognize that we are truly here for a reason, and that recognition inspires us and drives us every single day. My name is Tywell Hart. Being on the track and field team here is the greatest decisions I've made besides coming to UMass Boston. When you train together in that sort of intensity, you build a sort of a bond with people who are training with you, you know. It's, it's like a higher level of friendship. It's like teammates it's, or, you know, it's just a different level. My freshman year, I got a rookie athlete of the year. Outdoor for my sophomore year, I was the first time I went to nationals. When I jump, it's a little difficult considering I have a hereditary disorder known as amblyopia. There we go. It's pretty much just a partial blindness in the left eye. The best way to describe it is if you have decent prescriptions for um, contact lenses, you take one of the lenses out, and then you close the, you put These are the final stats we've got here from the 3 nothing UMass Boston win. UMass Boston taking pretty much every category, every major category except for digs. I think that's really just because UMass Boston got off many more attacks. The aces kind of tell the story with three more points on average per set than the Bobcats were able to get from the same category, making up for what would seem to be a more even rate of kills or a more even total of kills rather the aces tell the story now let's look at the team leaders for each side for umass boston amelia chepieska taking the kills title with 10 of them carson commons 28 assists no huge surprise there the bigger surprise eight aces four commons a couple of blocks each and then Alyssa ruan leading the way in digs Alyssa Lowther, 44 kills across the match for the Bobcats. Julia Newman leading the way in Wraith. And Emma Eid, who we highlighted earlier in the broadcast, leading the way in the assists category. But it wasn't enough for the Bobcats as they dropped three straight sets to UMass Boston. Some thank yous going out to our production team. Everyone helped to put this broadcast together. Allie Crawford, the producer. Gigi Braga, Tam Landry. Our directors, Hannah McDougal, Jordan Toomey, and Elsa Vinaco on the cameras. 
And that'll just about wrap it up for us. Once again, the final score from the Clark Athletic Center in Boston, UMass Boston takes it three sets to none. They'll be back in action Tuesday at 7 p.m. from this same spot on the Clark Athletic